you, yeah you, may be doing something really special or important. And you may need help getting the word out. We got you. Email us at guesswhopod at ppoicm.com about advertising to our listeners. How you doing today, sir? I'm great, bro. How are you, man? I'm doing good. I have Terrence on. Once again, this week I have an old, old friend uh, to share their story and their journey. I'm, I'm thinking, I've already thought ahead of, of titling this one, Pain to Power. And specifically with uh, him being on this last season, season six of Power, uh, which is a show that I follow. Very, very good drama by, by 50 Cent and Courtney, Courtney Kemp Agbo. Uh, but he, he'll be featured on the, this newest season of Power that's coming later this year. But before getting into the acting and, and movies and so on and so forth and television shows, I wanted to talk about his history and his story. So Terrence and I connected a church a, a while ago back in Maryland. And uh, he was the worship leader at the church. He sings too, by the way. Uh, but he, he was leading worship at, at church and uh, was very much so a, a supportive uh, role for many of the, the young guys there at the time. But he had, he had a unique story that he, he shared with me and others at the time. So for the listeners who aren't, aren't familiar, could you could you give some uh, some background on where you were when we connected? Sure. Um, well, I was in my mid-20s. I was about 24, 23, 24 years old at the time. This was back in like 2005. Um, and I was I, I, I just joined the Life Center at that time after seeing one of uh, Jay Cameron's plays that actually you know, changed my life, um, Sex Bose. And uh, it drew me to the mission of uh, Urban Change and what they were about. And it was about helping the community. And so um, at that point, uh, God led me to join the Life Center because I was looking for a church home and trying to find my, you know, my own personal relationship with Christ uh, or, I guess, rededicate my life. And uh, prior to that, though, you know, I my upbringing was kind of, I had a tragic upbringing. Um, I lost my mom, brother, and sister as a result of a house fire um, in Northwest DC. And uh, my father passed away when I was two years old. So, you know, it was kind of rough as a, as a kid. I had to go to counseling. But I was thankful that God placed people in my life that poured into me and that encouraged me to continue to do the best that I could to succeed in life and um, not use my circumstances as an excuse to go the opposite way, if that makes sense. And so fast forward to joining the life center, I met you. I believe you were either high school or just going into high school and uh, me and some of the other People at the church, we, you know, some of the other guys, we, you know, tried to pour into you all. And, but believe it or not, you all were inspiring me at the same time, um, just to still find my purpose as to why I was, you know, why God allowed me to still be here. You know, you always like a little bro to me, man. And you always, you always were doing right, man. Never had to worry about you, man. So that's a, you know, that's a testimony to your mom and your dad, man, for the job they did with you. And uh, I'm just honored, man, to be in your life, man, and, and be able to inspire you in some kind of way. I, I, I hope that I was able to you know, inspire you in some kind of way, man. No, definitely. I think that's that's why, why I had having you on and, you know, wanted to highlight. So with this show, I, I try to you get opportunities where you get people who just are very well known and, and yeah. they're, they're on, you know, just for the sake of the draw. But then yeah. there are others that I have on who I think have powerful stories and who I know personally, who I can affirm are are, are, are about positive things. And yeah. in this case, you know, I think we're able to have a balance of both. I know you personally, but you're also have gotten into a space 
that many, you know, are wanting to get into being on yeah. feature in certain films and TV shows. But I would definitely say that in my experience, it was a, was a positive image to see you coming from a very difficult circumstance and still being positive. Yeah. Because I thought, you know, when I heard your story, I, it was hard to believe because I always saw you as a positive, upbeat and funny person. You were a jokester. So yeah. it was it was yeah. interesting to to hear such a, a difficult circumstance to be yeah. coupled with such a positive disposition. So that was an encouragement in one, but two, to see you walk through the uh, different phases of life as a young person um, from the same area. Because I know you went from there. You know you came to the church single, and then uh, yeah. and then got married and yeah, children my, my and wife, so on and so forth. Yep. Yep. My, my wife through urban change. Yep. Yeah. Wife so. For you, and I and I, I, I ask questions like this to not to pry, but to to help people understand the mindset behind certain circumstances or, or understand themselves better. So yeah. with the difficult circumstance of losing family, that's of course comes with grief and the idea of loss. Yeah. Uh, do you think that well one, I'll say that definitely I can highlight that even with that at that church at that time we had uh, a family. Uh, for any yes. who who didn't have that personally, you were able to find that there yeah. and just support. So that was that was one thing. But do you think good. that it made um, your circumstances made it hard at all as far as being open to establishing new relationships and building a new family? Um, not at all, man. I think I, I've always been like a open book, man. Uh, I try to be as honest as possible. And I've never been one to shy away from just letting people know who I am and what I went through to make me who I am. And I never tried to sugarcoat things. I've always been brutally honest. If someone asks me a question, you know, I'll be honest with them and tell the truth. And uh, so, yeah, it's never been a problem with me, you know, being shy or not wanting to give away any details. Because my prayer at the end of the day is that my story blesses somebody or that I'm able to inspire someone in some in some kind of way. I mean, I've, I've dealt with people that um, have dealt with suicide and me, myself included. Um, you know, it's just, you know, the enemy is real. You know, the devil is real. And, you know, I never try to put confidence in my flesh. And um, I just try to be transparent as, as possible. Mm -hmm. I I noticed that I think your situation is unique because what I've noticed is people that have had that circumstance or something similar that was had a lot of grief. Yeah. For many people, life kind of stops there. They're kind of stuck in that moment or that that phase for an extended period of time. So yeah. I'm wanting to get at if you could speak to not. I don't think you ever get over things like that, but you yeah. get to a point where you're able to to cope and still progress in life. So how would you counsel or speak to someone who may have dealt with grief, but is still kind of staying there and having difficulty moving forward with life? Um, surround yourself with uh, good people, um, people that's going to pour into your life and not take away from your life. Um, I always had people. Sports was a big, uh, a big part of my life in, in, in high school. It got me through those tough times. You know, my uh teammates that I played alongside in high school were still close to this day. And we always challenged each other and we always picked each other up when when the other one's down. We can always sense when someone was, you know, going through something and it, it, it created a avenue for us to be able to open up and talk about what it is that we were dealing with. Yeah. And, I've all, and I, I had coaches. My coaches, they would always get me to look at the bright side of things. Hey, you're still here. You know, God's not done with you. I used to wonder, what's my purpose here? Even before the acting took off, even before Urban Change, even before, you know, the Life Center, I really wondered. And I asked God, why am I still here? What is my purpose? But I had people just pour into my life uh, and, and challenge me. And uh, I had accountability. Even outside the church, my, my teammates were like my accountability brothers. Even in school, we made sure each other went to class and that we went to study hall. And, you know, we challenged each other. I, I got to see positivity from them. I watched other people, how they dealt with things. And, you know, I was always able to um, 
the pain that I did experience and the things that I that I did go through, I was able to, you know, use it for what I'm doing and, and look at the bright side of life. You know, if certain things didn't happen, then this wouldn't be happening today, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that may not be uh, a fortunate circumstance can open the door for something positive or it's the idea of God working things together for your good, uh, all things. So you you have that, uh, then you get married and then uh, eventually you started, I'm guessing the time we were connected, you you weren't necessarily pursuing acting that came later. So what opened the door as far as uh, outside of the, uh, the realm that we were in? So what, what opened the door for you pursuing it uh, further? Uh, believe it or not, man, it was, it was my brother, Mark McKenna, man. And I, I know you know Mark. Uh, I believe you remember Mark from earlier. Yeah, I know Jane. Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was actually doing the play, I, I met Mark, and he was like an understudy. And uh, I actually watched him. He was in Howard at the time, an undergrad. And it was his workshop in 2012 that he did that uh, – I attended, and even at the time, I I still had no confidence as to if I could even be successful in this industry, if I could see myself on TV. But it was, you know, his workshop that I got to go and experience and see other people, other actors that were trying to pursue this. And uh, he challenged me. He challenged me to figure out my brand as an actor, what it is, what roles could I see myself playing. But even further than that, uh, another person that ins- inspired me was uh, my my brother uh, Joshua Jenkins. Um, I was in one of his plays called Breaking Down in 2012 that we actually did at the Life Center, and it was the trailer actually for the stage play. It was like a mini movie. It was when I got to really see myself, how I looked on camera, how my acting came across, and that is what kind of jump started it for me too. It, it was it was Mark first. Uh, challenging me and pouring into me but then it was also at the same time it was me physically seeing myself on screen and it looked believable and i was like hey that that wasn't too bad maybe i can give this a try right and so then i started uh me and mark started going to classes in in new york and uh he would do workshops with his with his acting studio mckinnon acting studio here in maryland you know he'd put on workshops and i would go to those and I would just take notes. I would I would perform some scenes. I would take notes, and, and I picked up a lot of things from those workshops, uh, things that I had to work on to make myself better. And mm-hmm. it, it took it took going through some things, even with that, to find uh, the manager that I have now, the reps that I have now. I went through some rough spells, some dry some droughts in terms of where the phone wasn't ringing. I wasn't getting any emails for auditions and. No one, I couldn't find anyone to represent me. And part of it was because I, I simply wasn't ready. Uh, there was still work that I needed to do. And first, I, I needed to also believe in myself that I can do it and put fear aside and not try to compare myself to, you know, Denzel or, you know, Samuel Jackson or, you know, those big name actors. Yeah. But to incorporate and be myself, use the gifts that God gave me, um, even to use my pain that I went through to tap into some of the characters. Yeah. I was going to ask you, did that play any part in channeling that as far as any roles that you've had, have you had to channel that to kind of express emotion? I have. And one of the difficult things about acting or uncomfortable things, I should say is as an actor, sometimes you're challenged to take yourself back to a place where you experience pain or loss and, It's uncomfortable, but when you're in the moment and you realize that you're just you're portraying a character or or someone you're bringing someone vision to life, you'll find yourself remembering that moment or that time when you felt a certain way to to bring out that emotion, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And and a lot of personal experiences, even in past relationships. Uh, was dealing with, you know, dating and young ladies I've dated in the past and just, you know, just different things that I've, I've, I've experienced. I am able to incorporate that into particular characters. Right. If that particular uh, motion or action needs to take place. Right. So walk us through this, because I know there are a lot of people that aspire 
to be in that arena to act. And you mentioned a dry spell and of course it being work to get where you are and having agents and so on and so forth now. But where does this even start as far as you mentioned, you know, going to Mark's acting studio, McKinnon acting studio and classes and so on and so forth. But at what point does it transition beyond the classes and getting booked for smaller or larger gigs? How, do, how does that happen? How does someone find out about you to even book you? There's a page called IMDb's Internet Movie Database. Mm-hmm. And you pretty much can go there and find out whatever projects are out, what's coming out, who's in it. Or if you want to look up a particular actor, you can search their name and be able to see what they've worked on or what they are working on or what's coming up. Um, but also like it's called, it's also, they have IMDB pro. It's a account that you have to actually pay for right? monthly or yearly fee. I mean, you can see like who is, who reps or what actors are repped and who they're repped by and uh, things of that nature. Got it. So that's how people found you. Well, there's, there also, there was a, uh, before I had a, a rep, uh, there was a free casting website on there still is a free casting website called Dragon UK Connects. And a friend of mine who was an actor out in L- uh, L.A. at the time, um, he, he sent me to that website and uh, I submitted myself for uh, various roles through there. And as a matter of fact, I submitted myself for House of Cards, which was the first role that I booked on my own. I had no representation. Uh, I just went on this website and submitted to it, and I uh, got an audition out of it. And it wasn't my best audition, at least I didn't feel that way, because uh, I was still kind of new or green to the industry. I didn't feel like it was my best, but the casting office, they saw saw something in me to give me a chance, and so I'm forever grateful for that. So yeah, it was that website, logging onto that website, that helped me get started. I attached a, a resume, of what I had done, mainly which was stage plays and uh, my headshot photo. I attached that and just hit the submit button and they reached out to me to come in for an audition. So that's really where it started. And then from there, I, I just started building my own relationships with local casting directors in the Washington, D.C. area or DMV. I know you're in uh, L.A. now. I keep I keep thinking you're here, but you're, you're not. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm I, uh, still there in spirit. Right, right, right. I still right, like right. I still like mumbo sauce and all those. Good uh, things. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so um, I just built relationships with local cast and directors here in the area, and I just tried to stay relevant, stay on their radar. So that's pretty much how I got found found out locally, and then I went to one of Mark's workshops, and uh, that's how I found my first, my very first agent through his workshop. But prior to that, you know, I was taking classes with him and I still take classes at, at his studio because you can never know enough. There's always something you can learn and uh, just continue to take classes. And there was a rep at the time that I'm, you know, that took a chance on me and I'm grateful to them. You know, they took a chance on me at the time and that's what kind of jump started the ball. I started getting called up to New York for auditions and I jumped on, you know, made my way up there to audition and, uh, that's kind of where it started, but it, it, you know, people don't realize the journey though. They think they see, you know, they see you on TV. Oh, you're doing great. They don't really know what it took to get there. And there are many times being that I'm down here in the DMV area for the mainly, but you know, I go to New York when I have to, people don't understand or realize the sacrifice that it takes in terms of you're on a bus, a train, three and a half, four hours just to go up to New York for audition that's less than five minutes or 10 minutes tops just to hop back on bus a train or airplane to come back home. and may have to do it again if an audition comes through you may have to jump back on and go back up there you know but that's a sacrifice that i was willing to take i i i said god whatever you want to do or however you choose to do it you know this is what i asked for and just you know, have your way. He's been blessing me ever ever since, and I'm so thankful for my for my wife. You know, Tamika, she's so supportive, and uh, she m- has made this journey uh, so much easier as well. Mm-hmm. I'm just having her support, and you need that. 
and I talk to her. We talk about everything. Uh, we communicate about everything. And having her support has made it so much more easier as well. I know I kind of veered off a little bit, <laughs> but that's really the, that's my journey of how I got to where I am. Mm-hmm. So what would you say, and you might have mentioned it, and if I missed it, I'm sorry, but what was the, the role that you were cast for, whether movie or TV, where in that moment you felt, okay, this is paying off, or you felt like something was changing? The first role. Was um, there one moment, or was it a few things that happened? or um, The moment. Uh, I would say when I, uh, I got to work alongside Mahershala Ali, um, on a Netflix film called Roxanne Roxanne, mm-hmm. um, auditioned for it and uh, got selected for a part, but had no idea that you know he was attached. Or I, well, I knew he was attached to the project. I just didn't know that I would be in the the scene with him because in in this industry too, you'll get an audition with very vague details, and uh, your job is just to go in there audition and do your best, and if they are interested, they'll give you a call back. And so I auditioned for it, and maybe the next day, a day or two later, I got a, a email for a director's callback where I met with the director and the producer of the film. And uh, a couple of days after that, I got chosen for the part. And it's not until really until I got my uh, email with the call sheet details when I realized that I was going to be in the scene with him. And I'd been following his work for years and when once i got to set that's when it really became real it's like wow i'm this is amazing uh, a guy you know me I, and i it's cliche when they say little old me you know but me mm-hmm. this guy from washington dc all that i've been through they saw something in me to choose me to be a part of this project and i and i was very humbled to be a part of it so you know, getting to set, getting to my very first trailer, when very first trailer, you know, experience or, or set experience was on House of Cards. Um, and even even there, you know, with House of Cards, a lot of people don't know, I got to work with Jodie Foster. She directed my particular episode and she was right off camera <laughs> directing the episode. So I got to work with her on my very first TV project. I got to work with Jody Foster, and who gets to do that, you know? Right, not that uh, early. <laughs> yeah, that early, and, and it's not even a year or so after I decided I wanted to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but the Roxanne Roxanne experience was definitely a first for me because it was the first name character that I had. Whereas House of Cards, and I'm not downplaying anybody. Any role that I've done, I don't know who's listening to this. I know you have a lot of followers, <laughs> um, <laughs> but like with House of Cards, I was my my role was drug dealer number two, and yeah. right with Roxanne, Roxanne and number <laughs> right with Roxanne Roxanne, I was Big John, <laughs> and so it's you know that's when, that's when it really hit me. It's like, hey, I, I can do this. Maybe maybe there is a future in this for me, and I knew regardless, even if it took me. 10, 20, 30 years, I was still going to pursue this until it's my full time. So it's funny you mention uh, Mahershala because you're the third actor that we've had mm-hmm. on as a guest. Uh, mm-hmm. In our opening episodes, one of the, the first ones was uh, Warner Miller, who was featured in uh, American Gangster. And okay. he also had the chance to, I, in the interview, he spoke very highly of Mahershala as yeah. well. So he seems to to keep coming up. So hopefully we have him on eventually too. But yeah, I mean, yeah. With, with your, with your transition, at what point do you go from the way you were going about it without an agent, as far as the auditions and so on and so forth to then getting an agent? What does that transition look like and how does it work? Well, in terms of process for, for me and everyone's journey is different. So okay. some people, some people are overnight successes and I'll give an example of, um, Brashear Gray, he plays, he plays on Empire. He's Hakeem. the Hakeem Lion. Yes. Um, before he auditioned for that, he was a rapper from Philly. Philly. And he had no representation, no acting experience. And a friend of his that he was working with told him about the audition for Empire, 
and uh, I think he, I think it was a self tape or something like that. He did mm-hmm. sent it in. And then the producers and director, you know, Lee Daniels and his team was interested in him, called him out, and next thing you know, he booked the, he booked the roles, first job out, you know, first TV job, and now he's been in multiple projects since then. And so, whereas in my case, I've been doing it since about 2013, which isn't that, which isn't that long, but in my case. It took years, whereas in Bashir's case, it was instant, <laughs> you know, yeah. so everyone's journey is different. And so I would tell people never try to compare yourself to others. And I'm a true believer of this. What God has for you is for you. Yeah. There have been numerous uh, roles that I read for and I'm competing against well-known actors. You know, I, I didn't get it, but I, I don't dwell on it because I'm a firm believer. What God has for you is for you. And then in, in due season, you know, you'll reap a harvest and your time will come. You just have to be ready when the time comes. Yeah. And I think that comes with also trusting that what he has in store is better than what we had in mind. Uh, Absolutely. Because a lot of times we'll have our own plan. And it's like, well, this would be best in my opinion, but God is able to see the, be- the beginning and the end. So his, his plans are much greater than ours. Yeah, and it's like that cliche <laughs> saying, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Yep. And yeah. uh, it's interesting because in my neighborhood, there's a church, and I'm always intrigued by what they put on their sign. And there was a sign, uh, one of their message titles was, it, it was called, uh, it said, God is still writing your story. Stop trying to steal the pen. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was, it was a wow moment for me. And it kind of put things in perspective even more for me to know that he has a plan ultimately and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And for me, I gave myself boundaries as far as particular roles that I would play. And it's nothing against other actors that do different, you know, different roles. But there were just certain things that I I didn't want to do as an actor. And, um, you know, because I'm thinking about my daughter and things like that. So I had certain boundaries and stuff like that. And it's okay. And I learned it's okay. If you're not comfortable with some things, you don't have to do it. You know, some, someone else will. And, and no, don't compromise. If it, Definitely, if you're not comfortable with it, don't compromise. And so mm-hmm. that's come up each time as well with interviewing uh, two other actors, Warner Miller and uh, Yvonne Orgy. And uh-huh. it always seems, I guess it's, I guess it's the idea of being Christian in a secular space. So the yeah. idea of boundaries, as far as what you will or won't do on screen, that always seems to come up. And yeah. everyone processes through it differently. I've noticed. Yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So now we're looking at the the current situation. Now I've been a, a fan of Power and Empire. I know mm-hmm. many times people would compare uh, the shows, but I think they're different. Uh, Power has a unique thing going on, but they're both uh, at a point where they're coming to an end with their next seasons. Yeah. And uh, you uh, will be featured in this last season, season six of Power. So how is that connection connection made? Is there kind of like, and once again, submitting yourself to be considered? Is it agent connections or how do you find yourself on a hit show? It's, it's my manager's doing, you know, a manager or agent's job is to submit you for roles. And if casting is interested and based on your headshot and headshots are very important, always says your headshot is your calling card. That's the number one thing that's going to get you into the rooms is your, is your photo. And it has to be done professionally with good quality. And so, yeah, I attribute that to my, my reps. They, they're working hard. They work hard constantly. And even though sometimes my phone may not ring or may not have any emails, I know they're working. I know they're working for me. And so it's a big credit to them. Mm-hmm. That's okay. how power that's how power came about. I got an audition from my from my uh, manager and uh, audition for it and uh, end up booking the role the same day audition for it later in the day. So right. here we are. I'll be on the upcoming episode. I can't talk about it right now. But I'll be on an upcoming episode this season. Yeah. And I, I was wondering about that because I knew, okay, there's you're limited with what you can and can't say. And I remember I saw your post saying that you recently got approval to at least say that yeah. you'll be in the episode. But even with that, there's limitations. Yeah. Are you able to say, how are those things communicated to you? Like, how did they communicate to you that you got the role, but you can't say A, B, C, and D? Well, it's called a non-disclosure agreement. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, you'll get an email from your rep saying that you're uh, either pinned for a role, meaning you're considered for a role. So you're placed on hold against other actors for that same role. Then you'll get the next email is the offer email. And, but also with auditions, you'll have to sign, depending on the show and the network, you, you'll have to sign a non-disclosure agreement before you can even audition to mm-hmm. not talk about storyline or even the, even the role that you're playing. You know, they don't want really anything leaked storyline because that's, you know, you could definitely get sued right. <laughs> or not working anymore. Yeah, and I know they had issues with the last season where somebody leaked the episode on an episode online or something. So as a fan of shows like that, I hate when stuff comes out prematurely and you ruin the yeah. experience. Yeah. So in closing, you have an upcoming project that will be featured in the American Black Film Festival. So yes. could you do two things, share a little sure. bit about that film, but also explain to those that aren't aware what film festivals are and how those work? Okay, so the name of the film is called All In. And it's starring uh, Natia, Little Mama Kirkland. A lot of people know her as Little Mama, the uh, rapper. She had a song, Lip Gloss is Popping. But she has decided, you know, she's decided to branch out into acting more, more full time. And uh, had the opportunity to work with her uh, actually a couple of years ago. So it's, it's finally, you know, it's finally uh, coming out now at the American Black Film Festival. Uh, Thursday, June 13th in Miami. And so with film festivals, you'll have sometimes hundreds of films uh, that are selected to play at the festival. And most people buy tickets to the festival and select which films they want to go view. And so it's... um, And at those festivals as well, a lot of big networks are there, uh, production companies there are there to bid sometimes on your film if they want to bring it to their network like say they want to bring it to stars or Lionsgate wants to make it a uh, feature film to show in theaters you know if they want to market it to be shown in theaters or go straight to Netflix and so those are those are very important so you have directors sometimes that go there of of, of films and yeah production companies and CEOs that are there and different celebrities are there. Just it's also a great networking opportunity as well. And American Black Film Festival is one of the major ones. You have Sundance Film Festival. Mm-hmm. You have uh, what's it called? Canaan Film Festival. You have Toronto Film Festival. And there there are some others as well. But this is a big deal for this film. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited and honored to be a part of it. And it's actually the biggest role I've I've done thus far. Um so I'm excited about that. Well, definitely looking forward to it. For those that may be interested, I imagine and know that there are some aspiring actors who follow us and may want to connect with you to learn more, network, or just get some insight or follow your journey. How can they connect with you? So they can connect with me and follow me on Instagram. It's I'm just Terrence. So the letter I, the letter M, just Terrence, J-U-S-T-T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E. I'm just Terrence on Instagram. Facebook is Terrence Shingler. And on Twitter, it's the letter I, the letter A, the letter M, double underscore Terrence, T-E-R-R-E-N-C-E. So I try to make sure I spell it out that way because I don't want people to think it's I am just Terrence, but it's I'm just Terrence. Right. Um, So, yeah, that's that's how you can connect with me. I'm mainly on Instagram and Facebook. But, uh, you know, people plug me on, on Twitter. I definitely, I'll always respond back if I'm able to. Definitely. And I would love to follow everyone's journey. And, you know, send me your info too, man. Do you have a, you have an Instagram page for the, for the show or? Yeah, we are at, at guest who pod. And uh-huh. uh, that'll be, uh, when this comes out, there'll be tags everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So everybody will be, be connected, uh, and of course, I'm at Malik Blade. But we appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your journey as well as your story. I know it'll be inspiring to others, and prayerfully, you can be of support as others are trying to figure this industry out. But this is Malik Blade, and that was Guess Who.